Hello and welcome to Best Golf Accessories YouTube channel. Today we're going to learn how to make a golf yardage book for your local course. Golf yardage books are books that show you an overview of each hole. Uh, they give you distances to uh, hazards such as sand trap, sand traps, water. Um, they give you distances to the front, middle, and back of the green. Um, they give, they can, you can even uh, create a uh, green complex overview. Um, these books are designed to basically help you strategize your way around the course. Um, they can save you a couple shots whenever you're able to kind of dissect each hole a little bit more. Average project time to create one of these for a complete beginner is three to four days. Keep that in mind. You're going to need a couple of pieces of software uh, to create one of these yardage books. The first being Google Earth Pro. It's going to go to Google and Google Google Earth Pro. Click on the first link, make sure it's from Google. Go to the bottom of the page. Download Earth Pro on desktop and that'll take a couple seconds to download. The next piece of software you're going to need is Adobe Illustrator. Now, don't back out of the video just yet. Uh, I, t I told you this is a free way to create one of these yardage books. Um, and what we're going to be doing is uh, just using the seven day free trial. If you remember just a couple seconds ago, I told you that it takes about three to four days for a complete beginner to create one of these yardage books. Um, and I wasn't lying, I promise. We're going to start the free trial for Illustrator go ahead and sign up through here. You have a seven day risk free trial. If you forget to cancel after seven days, it's only $21 uh, for the month. And uh, if that happens, then you can create some other yardage books with the free time. When you have both of these pieces of software downloaded, go ahead and go back to the blog page. We're going to scroll down and download your free yardage book template. This template's going to save you some time um, and just make everything a little bit easier on you. Now, once you have the template downloaded, you have all of the softwares downloaded, we're going to hop into Illustrator. If you decide not to download my template, uh, we're going to have to set up the different artboards for our yardage book. I'm going to go ahead and name this file. Some, you, know, you can name that your local course name, whatever is easiest for you. I'm going to do 4 inches in width, 7 inches in height. You might have this set in pixels. If you do have it set in pixels, it's 288 uh, for width and 504 for height. We're going to need between 20 and 22 artboards. Um, and this is basically, uh, each artboard is going to be for each page. Now, if I can make any recommendation for you, um, I pr if you download my template, I promise you it'll save you some time. I'm going to open that up and we'll jump back in. Okay, so if you've decided against using my template, uh, free template, I should add, um, you're, going to need to create, you're going to need to create a couple of elements. If you are using the template, we're going to need to adjust a couple of elements um, on this page uh, to, set, to start setting up and organizing the, um, the, yard, the yardage book. This tab right here is our layers tab, very important. What this, uh, I've created basically one layer per each page. Um, first one, you know, being the title page, uh, this notes page, uh, you can, you can change, you know, your name or the, the name to your local club, um, the par distances, T's, you can change this quote if you'd like. Um, the, the, we're also going to learn how to change, uh, these elements right here in the side from the par uh, to the colors, um, and the distance, uh, the yardages for each hole here. To start, let's name our yardage book. What you're going to do is using the template, um, or if you're creating this by, from scratch, um, in layer two, in order from top to bottom, um, we're going to click on, we're going to make sure that this is unlocked, right? Going to go to uh, where it says your local country club, go ahead and click on it. Press T or go to the type tool over here. Highlight the uh, highlight your local country club and go ahead and type uh, the name of, of the course that you're mapping out. If you're wanting to change the par, uh, you can, with the type tool open again, you can just click on here, uh, just anywhere in here, and change the par. Same thing with uh, these. Uh, different T's essentially yardages and finally if you do decide to change this quote from the goat um, 
you can do the same thing. All of that is um, available with the type tool or pressing T on your keyboard. To zoom in and out easily to make things just more visible, uh, hold down the Alt, bu alt button would, and zoom in and out with a uh, keyboard. Or you can look for the magnifying glass tool right here. Zoom tool, I should say. Now, with the second page open, if you would like to change uh, the colors of the uh, different yardages, I'm going to press A or the direct selection tool. Click on the circle that you would like to change. And uh, here is your fill and your stroke um, elements. So you can cl double click, change the color. Um, if you don't like, if you don't want to have an outline, a border, or a stroke, uh, you can click on the stroke right here where it's empty in the middle and press none. But we're going to leave that just that, just fine, the way it is. Now we're done with naming our course and setting up our total yardages. Going to lock that tab. That way, nothing that we do uh, can affect these elements. Going to open layer three, which is going to be hole one. If you don't like the circle, you can uh, press A or the direct selection tool and delete it. Um, you can create a square um, and you know put it in place. Uh, if you do decide to make a square and, and replace all of these, uh, you can copy and paste them. Uh, you know, Control C, Control V, um, so that they will all be the exact same size. Next thing you're going to want to do with the third layer unlocked or hole one unlocked is uh, change the par if you'd like. Um, you can do this again by pressing T or going to the type tool and changing the par. You can do this with the yardages um, and if you'd like whoops and if you'd like to change uh, these uh, colors and fills uh, you can do that by pressing A and uh, selecting one and changing them over here in the stroke and the fill selection. Now, whenever you have all of your um, all of your holes ready and prepared, we're going to go into Google Earth Pro, go ahead and open Google Earth Pro, and we're going to start uh, taking pictures um, to import in here. Alrighty, now that we have uh, Google Earth Pro opened, um, before we start just running and taking uh, you know photos of everything, we're going to need to configure a couple of settings. Um, on Google Earth Pro uh, to make this easy to make measuring distances accurate. What we're going to do is go to Tools, press Options, go to Navigation, click Do Not Automatically Tilt While Zooming, and gradu gradually slow the Earth when rotating or zooming. I don't believe that this one matters, but I've, I've always just had it uh, checked. So whenever we have that, we're good to go. Now, the next thing that we're going to need to do and this is a bit difficult to articulate. Whenever you're zoomed over hole one, uh, I have just you know gone to hole 18 of a Hala Golf Club. That's not my local club. Wish it was someday, um, but just for this video's sake, I'm only going to do one one uh, one hole, um, and I'm and I chose this one. I've already taken a picture of this, uh, but whenever you are going to your local club you need to make sure that you have the settings configured just as how I show you showed you you're going to need to go over the first hole and in the top right hand corner left click on the eye and hold all the way down now if you see um, the camera is tilting not moving per se like I'm still locked in one like locked location um, but the angle that we're viewing is changing we want to be all the way down because this is essentially a 100% top-down view of the golf hole. You can zoom in and out with a scroll. When you have that 100% locked down, um, also if you're moving around, just in general, the the rotate the ring around that uh, can help you rotate the um, you know just can help you rotate the screen um, you can you know you zoom in on the hole that you want 
and then we're going to press print screen or you can use a tool like Snagit or Featherlight to take a picture of the um, of, of the hole. Go ahead and save that as a uh, JPG, JPEG or, um, or a PNG and then we're going to go back to Illustrator. When you're back in Illustrator, uh, go ahead and unlock hole one, or I'm sorry, uh, unlock layer three, which should be hole one. Click this down arrow. That'll just make some things here easier here in just a little bit. And I can't stress this enough, but make sure you have locked all of the layers that you are not using. We only want to have this layer unlocked. Go ahead and uh, take the picture of the golf hole that you just took. Um, I was just showing you hole, I, I think that's hole 17 um, of Valhalla, but I am actually, uh, for this video, I'm doing hole 18. So I'm doing this hole. Right here. Alrighty, back to Illustrator. Now that we're in Illustrator, go ahead and grab the, um, grab the J, uh, JPEG file, or JPG file, from your uh, files, drag and drop, Make sure you're, you know, on the whole one layer, and it should drag in there pretty easily. You should have uh, this, the direct selection tool, or I'm sorry, just the selection tool um, selected by default, uh, but if not, press V or go and click the selection tool. Make sure you click on the artboard, uh, or the whole one artboard, and try and line it up in the middle with your picture. Go to the top, press horizontal and vertical align. Uh, and we're, we're good to go. The next thing that we're going to do with this picture uh, or the photo uh, selected is hold down the shift and the alt key. Go to the bottom uh, corner and drag inward. Now that's going to make it, uh, that's going to resize the photo without changing the dimensions. So it's all, it's all the same size essentially. In the layers tab, Go ahead and click on, on the picture that you have, drag to the very bottom, and in the same way that we can lock other layers, we can lock individual elements. Go ahead and lock your picture so that you can, you know, uh, work with the whole or the, the numbers, all of that good stuff, um, but we can't touch or select the picture. Personally, I also like to lock uh, these, uh, these elements as well. Okay, now that we have our image in our artboard locked with all of the other elements locked, ready to start the fun part, uh, which is actually drawing or sketching um, on the image. It is so important that this image is locked, otherwise you're, you're gonna get nowhere with this. Go ahead and press uh, B, as in the letter boy, or uh, go over to the brush, paintbrush tool. Go down here to your stroke and your fill. Your fill is probably going to have black in it. Um, go ahead and press none. Keep your stroke uh, with black. I'm sorry, I just messed that up. Your fill, you want to have none. Your stroke, you want to be black. Go to the stroke up here at the top. This is your stroke weight. Put it down to five. Now, uh, one thing you need to know with the paintbrush tool. Uh, when you left click, hold down, you're going to paint something. Um, if you're painting something and you want to move, uh, press the space bar and hold it down and you you'll be able to grab and kind of move around. Again, as, early, as I said earlier, uh, press and hold down alt, scroll in with a mouse, with your mouse wheel. We're ready to start sketching. Again, press B. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is just go around the outside of the hole. You can do this with a couple of uh, you know, graphic design tablets if you have those. Um, I use a mouse and keyboard. You don't have to be... Uh, you, know, you want to be accurate, but it, it doesn't need to be you know, 100% spot on uh, because um, you know, you're trying to get the gist of everything um, is the best way I can explain it. You know, this is not going to be down to the quarter yard correct. You know what I'm saying? Like we're 
we're, we're, we want to make sure we're within, you know, a yard, yes. Um, but you don't need to get as detailed as to, you know, put the, um, or, you know, to, to, to tra you know, just trace as tightly as you can. Um, again, just get, you know, get, get the majority of it. Um, graphics tablets do make this easier. Uh, I actually have one myself, but just for, for the sake of this video, um, I wanted to use uh, mouse and keyboard because I'm sure that's what a majority of, of, of you all are using. Uh, you don't have to do it all in one long stroke uh, like I did. Um, I pr I'll show you how to how to join everything together here in just a second. Um, but we we just kind of want to trace around everything. Now we start with the fairway. is the first one. Kind of farmed it there at the end. That's all right though. Let's go ahead and scroll out whenever you've got everything, um, every everything there uh, for the fairway. I, I would also recommend doing this in, in kind of steps. You know, fairway hazards, uh, the green complex, uh, and then uh, T boxes and um, cart path if you want to do that. When you have this. Whenever you have, you know, the outline of the fairway, um, press V or open up the selection tool again. Click and hold. Grab all of this. Now, earlier, whenever I told you to lock the hole um, and, you know, uh, the the hole lettering and um, par and all that kind of stuff, this is why. Because uh, you know, if if I didn't have that locked, that would also be selected within this, and we don't want that. Right click, press join. You're gonna have to press this a couple times. Uh, you know, it's just joining all of the all of those brush strokes together. Um, probably did too many there, but that's okay. Now here's the secret to the whole thing. This is what makes this rough sketch uh, look better. Go ahead and press V. Highlight your new object. Press B again, as in you know, boy, for the brush. Now hold down the art or the alt key. Now this, what this is, is this is the smoothing tool. The smoothing tool does exactly what it, it looks like. It smooths all of these edges. You want to make kind of some short cuts through each edge. Get the rounding here. You want to make it all smooth. So this is already a pretty long video. Um, whenever I get done smoothing this video, I'm going to go ahead and sketch up the rest of, of this hole, uh, including the water, uh, the bunkers, the green complex, um, all of that good stuff. But for now, well, right now all I'm, all I'm doing is holding down the Alt button. I've got the, the brush tool selected, uh, and I'm just kind of trying to eliminate some of these uh, extra... things here. Alrighty. So you, it's a little bit rough here. Um, if you want to adjust these, you can click on here. Um, press A to hold, you know, to grab your um, to grab your drag selection. And you can grab these handles right here and that's going to help you kind of move specific dots uh, or specific points. Um, and these handles are the different anchors. Um, so you can kind of go through there again, adjust everything as you need to. Um, I might need to add some more points here. I'll take care of that. Um, so when you're done, I, or I'm gonna pause this and then sketch up the rest of this and check back in. Okay, now that we have uh, everything sketched and smooth uh, on the hole, um, we can go down to the layer uh, that the image is on, turn the eyeball off uh, so that we've got um, you know, just, just the outlines of everything. And uh, the next thing that we're going to do is start shading. Um, I, I always enjoy this part. I've already set it up, um, but I've got uh, these boxes that have all of the colors in them. Now, if you go to the blog, um, grab the image. Oops, so sorry. 
scroll down. I have I've covered where or I've, I'm giving you the colors and the hex codes that I use, uh, or the you know the number codes that I use for them. Um, but what you'll do with these uh, is copy you know this this number with the hash you know pound side. Um, you'll go onto your artboard. Make sure you know it's okay to put this in, in the same layer. Press M as in uh, Mary. Click and draw, and you're going to get a box. Press V or click on the um, selection tool. Also, if you just want the rectangle tool, it's right there. Um, go down to your fill. Press you know uh, con Control V to paste the color, and you'll have the color. I have given you all of these color codes. These are the color codes that I use, um, and, and they just make things a little bit easier. We're going to start with uh, the fairway color. Uh, so go ahead and click on the fairway. Now we've done the outline of everything, uh, so we're going to do the fill. Um, with only the fairway selected, you shouldn't have multiple selections. If you look down on these dots, like it shows you, this is the only this this is the fairway for me. This is the only layer that I have selected. Press I, or go here to the eyedropper tool, and go up to the fairway color, and just click on it. Now the fairway now this is going to look really weird because it's got the outline. Go ahead and click on the stroke, and then click none. You can lock that layer. Go to your bunkers, do the same thing. You can select multiple uh, elements by holding down shift and clicking. Alrighty, um, in the blog I've also included, uh, if you don't like the colors that I've used and you just want kind of a gray, uh, you can go with that. Um, I've used, I've, I've, you know, provided the grays and the colors there. Um, and also, you know, if you just want to use the outline, you can make, you don't have to fill any of this on. You can go to the stroke and just put it down to a very small stroke uh, and you should be good to go. Now, when you have all of this, uh, you know, done, these are all, you know, kind of the same size essentially, right? You can now, um, you know, resize them the same you would an image, um, and kind of move it around so that, or I'm, I wasn't holding, or I, I'm sorry, I had the, uh, where is that? That locked. There we go. And that one locked as well. You know, you can just resize everything, um, and kind of pick and choose what you want, what, what like you want to keep for your hole and, and how you want to organize it. Um, you know, let's say since it's par five, you know, we, we, we might not care about where all the T boxes are. So let's say we want to get rid of all of these. Um, you can just select those individually, but now we've got this big, long, um, cart path, uh, press E or I'm sorry, shift E, which is the erase tool or eraser tool is right there. Draw across your selection tool delete that you're good to go in the file um, there is at the bottom there are these markers right go down to whoops not that button but how to read this page unlock it grab either any one of these markers uh, you will have to ungroup that I'm sorry. So whenever you do this, you'll have to. You, you can use A, and kind of select these uh, to, you know, copy and paste them. Or with V, uh, everything is grouped together. Click on anything and just press ungroup. Then you'll have the option to copy and paste uh, uh, these distance markers. So we're going to lock that layer back. Go up to the top. 
Oops. Click back and hole one. I'm just going to paste this wherever. All right. This is where you can get uh, as detailed or, you know, as, as loose as you want with everything. Um, I set these up to be for the, uh, you know, wherever the dot is to be corresponding with the front, the middle, and the back of the green. Um, that's how this is all set up. Um, the way that I do, I do it is, you know, I find something that uh, I think makes sense to, to know the distance to, like the edge of this bunker. Um, I might put it right there. Um, that gives me like a mark to know where to place my measurement. So now that we're back here, you know, on, on our on the sheet or on the on the yard, yardage book that we're making, we're essentially right there. Go to this yardage ruler, and I promise you this is accurate within, you know, essentially a yard. Uh, it's very very accurate. You're gonna click and drag. So we know, you know, from right from the beginning of the bunker to the front of the green. It's 227 yards. So we're going to go back in Illustrator. Press T. Open the Type tool. Go. 227. Alrighty. So now we're going to go back to Google Pro. You don't have to like click. You want to leave this alone, but just click on this one. Put it to the middle of the green. So 243, 244 essentially. Do the same thing to 54. Okay, let's do kind of the same, you know, right about here. Seven to wait. Go to right here, kind of the middle of those, or in, in between the two lakes, uh, swamp area, whatever you want to call it. Come to the back of the green to one forty nine. One thirty eight. One nineteen. Essentially, yeah, you you get the point. At this uh, at this point, you can you know go through and map the yardages and and you know set it all up there. That is how you do it. Uh, you know, whenever you have um, all of this done, I'm going to show you one of my finished yard yardage books. Um, you're ready to print. Um, you might have to contact a an actual printer. You know, in in your local area, um, if you have you know, a printer yourself, you can print it, but then uh, cutting it to size kind of plays it in, into, you know, into the issue. Um, to get this exactly right, you also might want to look into um, purchasing, um, you know, some heavier stock paper, um, a paper cutter to help you do it at home, a stapler to help you, you know, a whole bunch to help you get everything um, sorted out. Um, but you know, you, you you just do all of your all of your holes. Make them you know make them look however you want. 